So welcome everyone to the final week of the series I've been doing on various sub-communities of fascist groups and their ideologies. This week we're going to have two more proper videos and then on Friday hopefully it'll be like a series finale where I'm going to recap everything and draw the links between different groups. So look forward to that type of stuff. But today we're going to be looking at the occult, Satanism and Nazism because there is a pretty strong link between these things. And I've sort of already touched on it on my pagan neo-Nazi video, but this is specifically going to focus on contemporary Satanist groups, but we're still going to talk about the history of the Nazis and the occult, which isn't just a myth made by the Indiana Jones films. But we're also going to show how contemporary Satanism is actually not that bad or that damaging because it does have an image of being very violent, very linked with fascism, but the church of Satanism is largely nothing to do with that. So we're going to talk about all those different things. So don't worry if you are a Satanist and you're watching this video and think this is going to be some sort of slander. It's not, but we are going to be talking about fascist groups that do seem to worship Satan. But before we go any further, edgier content on my channel is always demonetized. So if you want to support me monetarily, please check out my Patreon. Thanks so much to everyone who has already done this. At the moment, the benefits are gaining access to the private Discord server, and you obviously have your name featured at the end of every video and in the description. I'm working for some other benefits that will come in the future. If you want to join our growing community, please check out the Discord and the subreddit in the description. And if you want to follow me personally, check out at the Cavernacle on Instagram and Twitter. And also you slash Tommy Cahill 1995 for my personal Reddit. So with that out the way, let's get into the video. So when I talk about the links between Satanism and contemporary fascism, you probably know about the news stories from last year where US soldier Ethan Melser was accused of planning an attack on his own unit and he had links to Satanist fascist groups and weirdly Al-Qaeda as well and then another one in the UK was a House of Lords clerk's son who was a neo-Nazi Satanist but he got let off and safe to say it has been in the news lately and both of these have been linked somewhat to the Order of the Nine Angels which is the biggest Satanist fascist group so we're going to go into the history of them quickly so Hate Not Hope wrote a good article. So it goes on to say, The Order of Nine Angels is a Nazi Satanist group that promotes a supernatural, hateful system of thought which condemns liberal Judeo-Christian society and longs for a new imperial age created by a ludicrous sub Nietzschean superhuman figure called Vindex. Ultimately, the Order of Nine Angels elite aspires to colonize the solar system. The racist order deifies Hitler and the Third Reich, which are regarded as having attempted to create a satanic empire in order to achieve the destiny of the Western world. And part of their initiation, the Mass of Heresy, is performed before an altar adorned with a swastika banner and a framed photograph of Hitler and a copy of Mein Kampf. With black candles and the incense of Mars burning, the congregation dressed in black robes chant, we believe Adolf Hitler was sent by our gods to guide us to greatness. We believe in the inequality of the races and in the right of the Aryans to live according to the laws of the folk. And you hear that sort of language about the folk. In my other video about pagan neo-Nazis talking about the Germanic claims to the land and how they are the pagan gods chosen people. Now they also believe that civilization must be undermined and destroyed from within. So adherents are encouraged to be as grubby and horrible as they like committing crimes, random acts of violence, assault, and even the culling of humans. The three volumes of their Black Book of Satan are so extreme that they are kept in a special section of the British Library and are not available to the general public. And in the training manual written by one of their leaders, Richard Moult, Followers are encouraged not just to commit crimes, but to spread it, encourage it, incite it, and support it. Now, like most neo-Nazi groups, this one was formed in Shropshire in the UK. No, I'm joking about that. But it was formed in Shropshire in the 1960s. And it was a coming together of the Dark Paven Covens, Camlad, the Temple of the Sun, and the Nocturlians. With one of the early adherents being David Myatt, who wrote the majority of the group's literature. But in the 1990s, the leadership of the organisation was taken over by Richard Moult, who now operates under the name Christos Beast, and he publicly resigned in 2001, but returned in 2008. Now, talking about that ideology, he was asked in 2005 
if they were just posing as Nazis to recruit and spread their Satanist message. And Myatt said, you seem to have missed the point about the ONA and National Socialism. From the get-go, we have praised Hitler, encouraged members to join National Socialist groups, with one of their core principles being opposing what they see as Jewish control of global culture and economics. He went on to say, we have to stop dreaming of winning national power by playing the unfair electoral game of our opponents and start being practical. The primary duty of all national socialists is to change the world. National socialism means revolution, the overthrow of the existing system and the replacement of a national socialist society. Revolution means struggle and war. It means certain tactics have to be employed and a great revolutionary movement organized which is primarily composed of those prepared to fight prepared to get their hands dirty and prepared to spill blood. But this guy seems pretty unhinged. He also spent 11 years as a Muslim promoting Al-Qaeda. But maybe you can see that as compatible because obviously Al-Qaeda is also opposed generally to Jewish people. It's opposed to the Israeli state. And because they commit acts of violence and disrupt society as these Satanists see it. But it seems kind of weird because a lot of of Nazis going back to Himmler who loved the occult, the reason they didn't like Christianity is because Jesus Christ was a Jew and it had Abrahamic origins. So it seems kind of weird these neo-Nazi Satanists would somehow join Al-Qaeda. But that also happened with the guy who was planning an attack on his own unit in the US who was a fascist Satanist. You can make a whole video about the weirdest contradictions of these groups because there's just so many. But moving on, let's talk about a group you may have heard of, the Atomwaffen Division. Of course, when we talk about people like Andy No, we talk about these guys. Now, this wasn't founded as a Satanist group at all. It's more in line, I guess, with the video I made about paganism and things like Odinism and everything. But it has taken a slant towards Satanism. And we're going to talk about how that has changed. But just like the other group, the Order of the Nine Angels, these guys do promote like violent struggle, violent revolution. So there was an Atom Waffen member called Joshua Caleb Sutter who ran something called the Martinet Press, which is a, just a WordPress blog from what I can see, about Satanism and fascism, which turned the Atom Waffen division into a more satanist direction so this article from the splc center wrote that infighting ensued throughout 2018 with some members leaving in disgust over the group's welcoming stance on satanism and the turn towards violence as an end in itself instead of just an end to get national socialism so it is something that's infiltrating other groups but a lot of these neo-nazi groups in america already have, I guess, pagan influences and other occult influences outside of just Satanism. So it's not surprising this Satanist ideology can gain a foothold. Now, just like the other videos, we're going to go into the history of this stuff. We're going to look at Nazi Germany, but we're going to go a bit further back to see how this sort of stuff flourished with the Nazis, with, of course, Heinrich Himmler, the most prominent one, believing in a lot of his stuff. And while a lot of it isn't strictly speaking to do with Satan and Satanism and worshipping this being they see as like this devil figure, it has a lot to do with the wider, I guess, fascist movement of their belief in lots of his stuff. And there is a lot of overlap, like I said, with the pagan video. So Open Democracy did a good article titled Racist Occultism in the UK behind the Order of Nine Angels. So it goes in to say, the political group that would eventually become the Nazi Party was founded in part by individuals from... Now, I don't know how to say this word. I've read different definitions online. It, it To me, T-H-U-L would be like fuel or something, but apparently it's the Thule Society. So let's go with that, the Thule Society. You drop the H and it's like that. So an esoteric group dedicated to studying the mythological origins of the Aryan race, Several prominent Nazis were either members or active in the society, including Rudolf Hess. The society's primary focus was on the study of Ariosophy, referring to the wisdom regarding the Aryans founded by occultist Guido von List and Lanz von Liebenfels, and we talked about both of these guys in the Pagan video. These individuals' beliefs would come to inform significant aspects of the Nazi state, such as von List's belief in the power of magical ruins. The most glaring example of this would be the twin Sig ruins that formed an SS insignia. Von Liebenfels argued that the Aryan people were intentionally bred via electricity by interstellar deities called Theozoa, 
while the other races were the result of interbreeding between humanity and ape men. According to Liebenfels, gradual interbreeding had robbed the Aryans of their magical powers. Liebenfels would also circulate a magazine called Ostara, based on these beliefs, whose readership included a young Adolf Hitler. And these people also believed Aryans were descended from Atlanteans. Now, I actually knew about this before, this belief of being descended from Atlanteans, from playing Assassin's Creed, which believes in a precursor race of humans. And then I watched that film, The Lost City of Z, and researched the film afterwards. And the two people, the husband and wife involved in that, also believed in this stuff. And all these lost cities are like these precursor races of humans, which I thought was pretty interesting. And it's interesting it's not just relegated to Assassin's Creed. But the article goes on to say Himmler's Rasputin. A great number of German occult societies were shut down, not because of a sudden surge of skepticism or rational belief, Instead, occult-related activities and organisations were often suppressed in Nazi Germany at the behest of Himmler's Rasputin-like personal occultist, Karl Maria Willigut. The point of this was to ensure that Willigut's own brand of occultism would be the eminent philosophy of the Nazis. He developed a religion centred on worshipping the Germanic god, I don't know how to say this, Erfmin? According to Willigut, German culture dated back to 200,000 BC, a period of time when the Earth had three suns and was populated by giants, dwarfs, and other mythical creatures. He also claimed to be descended from a line of kings from his period of time. This guy was a diagnosed schizophrenic. Himmler often consulted him and used his prophecies, and he also chose the castle V. Wolfsburg to serve as a base of operations for his SS troops and established a room in the castle with a crystal representing the Holy Grail, Villiger also helped in the design of the rune-covered death's head rings that the SS troops wore, personal awards that Himmler issued himself. And the article goes on to say that Himmler was attracted to this occult ideology because he didn't like the Jewish origins of Christianity. Now, elaborating on this castle a bit more, it says that Himmler would go there once a year to take part in satanic rituals and read cultish texts of Germanic tribes. With Himmler as King Arthur and 12 SS officers as the 12 knights, these leaders gathered annually in the knight's gear at a round table and tried to channel the pagan heroes of German legend. Castle was the pseudo-religious holy centre of the SS. It was built in the late Middle Ages and its walls were decorated with a symbol of the Indo-European Black Sun symbol, which is similar to to a swastika and you guys might have seen more contemporary neo-nazis using this symbol the castle was believed to be in the area where the german hero arminius defeated the roman empire in the year 9 ce essentially liberating the germans from roman rule himmler saw himself as the descendant of henry the fowler king of germany and founder of the german nation in the 10th century henry destroyed the slavic tribes in eastern germany now that stuff all seems fairly ludicrous and it is and i read a good article talking about how this sort of stuff hasn't been given the attention it deserves because historians have primarily liked to focus on, I guess, more relatable stuff. More stuff we can understand on a maybe rational level and not an irrational level. But you can see how this fits in with national socialist far-right ideology. They essentially, just like the pagan video I was talking about earlier, they talk about a master race which has rights to certain lands which are descended from, you know, these super beings as well as part of it, you know, the Atlanteans. And it's all about, you know, who you're descended from, keeping the race pure, looking back at history and looking back at these heroes, you know, in Himmler's example, looking back at old kings who banished Slavic tribes, looking back at people that stopped the Roman occupation of Germanic territories, creating this fictionalized version of history, which all these fascists seem to do. So we're going to get a bit more into that ideology and how it exists before the Nazis, because we already read that Hitler would read these occultist magazines. So an article from The Ringer titled The Magical Thinking of the Far Right delves into this and its roots in Austria, of course, where a young Adolf Hitler would have been and how it influenced Austrians there. So the article says... Many of the manifestations of occultism were profoundly, even foundationally, racist. For decades, ethnically German Austrians had felt their status and security ebbing within the multi-ethnic Austro-Hungarian Empire. They had the most money, they had the most property, and they wielded the most power. 
but migration had changed the demographic ma- makeup of many parts of the empire, including Vienna. Legal reforms had given Slavs and other groups new standing, then World War I came and the empire itself disintegrated. Occultism gave its practitioners the feeling of having discovered a true, fixed and unified cosmic order, which exists in secret beneath the false, unfixed and disunified flux of everyday life. Occultism thus tends to thrive at moments of intense societal anxiety when empires are falling, when cultures are changing in radical ways. In the years before and after the First World War, the occult story many German-speaking Austrians discovered they wanted to hear was one in which the Aryan race stood at the heroic centre of an enchanted universe. The hope of the world lay in the pan-German nationalism, and this was not merely an interpretation of an opinion, but a truth ordained by the cycles of history and myth. The only thing that had prevented the great German nation from fulfilling its destiny was the nefarious plotting of lower human types. Now, we spoke about various occult movements, but this article says movements around the idea that Christ had been German, that the true gods were those of the Norse pantheon, and that the pagan parts of the German people and their runic magic could point the way to a new religion of sun worship, Writers associated with these movements argued that the extermination of the Jews would bring about a magical Aryan renewal, and this is where they started to talk about the swastika. So just like I was saying, these people always like to look back at a mythicized, fictional version of history. Now, in the case of post-World War I in Germany and Austria, you can see how the conditions created there would turn people to fascism. And as we've been taught about it in contemporary history books, is that these people liked people like Adolf Hitler, because he promised to, you know, make Germany great again, but mainly talking about Germany maybe 30 years ago, or talk about Germany in these sorts of ways we understand. We never really get taught about how these guys appeal to the occult and these myths and, you know, this paganism and sometimes this Satanism. So talk about how the German people in this instance and the Germanic people, including German-speaking Austrians, have this fixed role in, I guess, the universe where they are destined to rule. And the only thing stopping them and what will help them get back to the position of power that has been destined to them is getting rid of, you know, people they don't see as equal. Now, generally, there's lots of racism which doesn't have anything to do with the occult towards Slavs and Jews at this time. But this is why this topic is interesting, that a lot of them justified it with their occult ideology, that the Germanic people had this direct link to the Atlanteans and these super beings, essentially. And while the rest of them had been bred as crosses between ape men and humans, and as ridiculous as that sounds, when you have people like Heinrich Himmler believing in it, the guy who leads the SS and one of the top people in the Nazi party, you can't really discount this ideology. And this is what the historic, you know, occultists in Germany sort of share with the contemporary fascist Satanists, is this belief about these lesser races really undermining, I guess, the mystic destiny of these people. Where they differ somewhat is that although National Socialists here in the 1930s did believe in violent struggle to achieve their aims, I guess the thing with the Satanists in the fascist movement is that they also believe in cruelty for cruelty's sake. There isn't always a goal there unless the goal is like Charles Manson style, bringing the world into absolute chaos so you can, I guess, create the society from the ashes. Where I guess other contemporary fascist movements believe in violence as a means to an end of taking over the state and creating their own nation that way. But it is clear there's always been a pretty strong link between occultism and fascism for at least the last 100 years. So like I said earlier, what I'm trying to do now in these videos is show both sides, and I've tried to do that in the last couple. And if you're a Satanist, you might be watching this and being like, I would never believe in this fascist stuff or even this mystical stuff and this mystical rubbish. So let's get into that side of it and what's most Satanists that you will meet today will believe in. So the Independent ran an article at the end of last year. Now they asked him, what is the biggest misconception people have about Satanism? And he said, the main and most persistent misconception about Satanism and Satanists is that we believe in and worship an anthropomorphic or spiritual being known as Satan. This is false. We Satanists are atheists who adopt Satan as a symbol of passion, pride, liberty, and heroic rebellion in the tradition of the proto-Satanic fiend poetry and writing of people like Lord Byron, John Milton, 
and Mark Twain. So I should further clarify that I apply the tool of scientific skepticism to critically analyse and question all things. I therefore reject all forms of pseudoscience, new age spirituality and the supernatural, including but not limited to the occult, magic, Ouija boards, tarot, psychic, divination, ghosts, immorality, astral projection, chakras, faith healing, astrology and conspiracy theories. All of this is as ridiculous to me as praying to Jesus or Shiva. And another article by Southwest Londoner where they interviewed a Satanist titled Blood Lettings and Charity Work. And some of them do do ritual stuff. So that's what I wanted to use this article for. So um, rituals within the temple are used to make statements about social issues. And he said, we did one that was called a bloodletting. It involved taking a pint of my blood and then pouring it over my head on a stage. It was a statement about the limitations that were put on blood products from men who have sex with men and from sex workers. So that is pretty interesting and it might seem odd, but the message is a good one. So to sum up with all this stuff, that Satanism and contemporary Satanism generally has nothing to do with fascism, doesn't believe in the occult, just like this guy said. But the Satanism that fascists believe in is this worship of people like Hitler, of Nazism in general, which itself had strong ties to the occult, and carrying out violence not only to help create a national socialist society, but just to be cruel to society, just to sort of hurt the status quo and lash out against society. Again, think of people like Charles Manson. And that's why, strangely, they have weird links with Al-Qaeda, and they also want to disrupt what they see as the Jewish control of our culture and global economic system. Pretty clear-cut fascism. It isn't actually that much different, I guess, in their actions, but the difference is they believe a lot of this weird stuff, and they're much more like Himmler and people around him than I guess other fascists you may think about. But it has strong links with pagan neo-Nazis and Atom Waffen has a lot of those. So that's why I find it funny a lot of them got so mad that Satanists were taking over. But again, I think the key distinction is that they will start to use violence and do illegal acts as part of their ideology that may not actually help these groups get into power or take over. But if you haven't checked it out, check out my other video about pagan neo-Nazis. It talks about a lot of this stuff, but is mainly focused on things like Norse mythology. If you've made it this far, let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you want to support the channel, please like the video, maybe subscribe. If you want to follow me on social media, at The Cavernacle on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to support me monetarily, check out my Patreon in the description. If you want to join our communities, look at the Discord and the subreddit also in the description. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.